Brakatayahawa, Brakatayahawa Shai, Brakatayahawa, Brakatayahawa Shai, Brakatayahawa, Brakatayahawa Shai. Blessed be the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. And blessed be the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, our Lord and our Savior. Nathamashana Kabbalah is a quote Mishra Shirali, get double honest to the elders of Israel, being the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Inshallah, Wahab Labaki Yashra Yashirali, which is peace and love to the elect of Israel. Come back at y'all again with another lesson. Baharu Kachoda Shah Amaf and the Holy Spirit of Truth. And um, the title of this lesson is going to be something along the lines of your relationship with Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai is the only thing that's going to matter. Okay, in these last days, that's the only thing that's going to have any value. Everything else is going to be null and void. It's not going to matter how much money you got. It's not going to matter uh, what degree you got, what college you went to, what job you got. Okay. What neighborhood you stay in, how many likes you get on Instagram or followers you have on social media. None of that shit is going to matter. What is going to matter is if the Lord is for you. Okay? Because the Lord is going to show. It says in the book of 2nd Edge, the 16th chapter, it says, Then shall be known who is my chosen. We can really just start off with that. This is 2nd uh, Edge, chapter 16. <clears throat> Second Edge, chapter 16 and verse... 78 for behold the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you and they shall take away certain of you and feed you being idle with things offered unto idols so this devil is about to come down having great wrath because he knows that he has but a short time we're not finna just keep being here for for years and years saying what we've been saying it's happening right now the lord said in the book of ezekiel the 12th chapter that i will say a word uh, uh, uh and in your days will i perform it roughly paraphrasing the word has been said all right, now the, now the Lord is going to confirm the word of his messengers, okay? <clears throat> it says, verse 69, And they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and in reproach and trodden under foot. So, hey, throw hand, join a hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished. All right, you join a hand with this devil, you're going to be thrust through. All right, you're going to be, the, the Lord is going to judge you. You join a hand in hand with Esau, Esau, Edom's going down. So if you join a hand in hand uh, with him, consenting with him, you're going to go down with him, plain and simple. It says, verse 70, for there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. A great insurrection, a great uprising is coming against the nation of Israel, against you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. It says, they shall be like mad men, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. So they, they, this devil's going to lose it. He's going to go crazy, right? He's going to bug out, okay, even more. And he's going and he's going to just take the gloves off and pull no punches and show that he's the devil that the Bible speaks of. Verse 71. Or Salakia. Verse um, verse 72. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. They're going to be going. They're already talking about what? Door to door, right? Knocking on everybody's door. Hey, you submitting? You doing what we told you to do, right? Okay? It's going to start getting violent. Okay? He's going to start. He, it's going to start getting physical. All right? It says, verse 73, Then shall they be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. So when all this, when this devil comes down having great wrath and all these calamities and trials and tribulations and plagues is coming upon the earth, the Lord is going to reveal who he's dealing with. And simultaneously, he's going to reveal who he is not dealing with, who hasn't been serving him, who hasn't been uh, 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 seeking him. It says that in the book of Chronicles. Let's read that. This is 2 Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 12. It says, And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord Yahweh, power of their fathers, with all their heart and with all their soul. This is our duty as Israelites. Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, the whole duty of man is to fear the Most High and to keep his commandments. We entered into a covenant with him. We are to be upholding that covenant. All right? Verse 13, it says that whosoever would not seek the Lord, power of Israel, should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. If you're not seeking Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, you will not be defended in these last days. If you are not serving the Lord, you will not be taken care of. He said, my servants shall eat when everybody else is hungry. Everybody else is what? The ones that haven't been serving him. Let's read that. This is Isaiah chapter 65. 
Isaiah 65 and verse 12, uh, 11. Isaiah 65 and 11, it says, But ye are they that forsake the Lord, that forgot my holy mountain, that prepare a table for that troop, and that furnish the drink offering unto that number. You, the, These are the niggas, man. All right? These same niggas telling you to get the jab. They leading you to that they leading you to the troops. They leading you to the slaughterhouse. They leading you to the devil. Right? To the wolf. Okay? These are they them same niggas. Your celebrities. Okay? Your 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 uh so-called pastors in these churches. These so-called Israelite leaders and teachers, these false prophets. Okay? The the Lord is gonna show that He is not with them. All right, that they are not chosen, that they aren't his servants. The scriptures say the hour cometh and now is where the true worshipers will worship him in spirit and in truth. These guys are not true worshipers. It's Isaiah 65 and verse 12. Therefore will I number you to the sword and ye shall all bow down to the slaughter. Because so there's going to be great death upon this place, man. There'll be many more of them which shall be uh, destroyed than of them which shall be saved. Roughly paraphrasing the book of Second Ezra. A lot of people is going to die in great number. Isaiah 66. I'll just read it. Isaiah 66 and verse 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire. And with the, it says fire, not flowers. Not fun. The Lord's coming and he's coming back angry. He's coming back pissed off. Okay? With vengeance in his heart. For behold, the Lord will come with fire. And with his chariots like a whirlwind. To render his anger with fury. And his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. The slain of the Lord is going to be many. Alright? The Lord is going to bring great evil upon this place. Um, Amos, shall there be evil in the city, and the Lord has not done it? The Lord's going to start. If the Lord killeth, then he maketh alive. He woundeth, then he healeth. Okay? So a lot of people is, is, is going to get put to death. All right, and it's going to all be ordained by Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, Shai. It's the book of Isaiah chapter, back in Isaiah 65 and verse 12. Therefore will I number you to the sword, and ye shall all bow down to the slaughter. Because when I called, ye did not answer. When I spake, ye did not hear. But did evil before mine eyes, and did choose that wherein I delighted not. So you choose the things that displease Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Alright? You chose the things that uh, 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 that was contrary to his word. Alright? It said when he called, you did not answer. When he spake, you did not hear. Alright? Meaning you didn't submit yourself to his word. You did not fall in, uh, 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 in order to what is written. Okay? Therefore what? He's numbering you to the slaughter. Alright? Verse 13. Therefore... Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, my servants shall eat. So the ones that's doing the things that's pleasing to Yahweh, Basham, Yahweh, Shai, forsaking their own ways, those are the ones that's going to be eating when there's no food in the grocery stores, when the, uh, um, when the full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. The Lord is going to allow the ones that's serving Him and seeking Him to be Satisfied as the scriptures say in Psalms, they shall be satisfied in famine. Okay? But everybody else that's not seeking him, that's not taking heed to his word, what's going what what's going to happen to them in the famine? Right? It says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Behold, my servant shall sing for joy of heart, and ye shall cry for sorrow of heart, and shall howl for vexation of spirit. All right, so these people, a hey, right, their joy and their mirth is all going to be turned into sorrow, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The scripture say in Isaiah that the uh uh there's a cry that let me read it. Isaiah 24 and verse uh, 10. It says, The city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up that no man that no man may come in. There is a crime for wine in the streets. 
all joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. All right, the Lord, all that mirth and, and joy and folly that you niggas is participating in, all, all that shit is going to be taken away. All right, and the Lord is going to bring hell. It says in the book of uh, Second Ezra, the ninth chapter, they shall dwell in torments. All right, they're going to live in torments. Okay, um, this is Isaiah, back in Isaiah, I'm going to go to verse 66, or chapter 66 and verse 1. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath mine hand made. Which this is, this is, the Lord made everything, man. From the smallest bugs. The bugs is innumerable. You, Esau don't, can't classify every bug. That's what the Lord made. Every, fruits innumerable, right? The, the, these different uh, animal species. The, the Esau has not discovered all of them. The Lord has all that numbered, Right? It says that he has the hairs on our head numbered. Everything that we see and everything that we don't see, he has power over. He controls. We do not need to fear anything. We All we have to do is fear Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All we have to do is trust in him. All we have to do is continue to serve him. He will take care of everything else. Isaiah 60, uh, Matthew 20, uh, like in Matthew 6 and... Um, the uh Matthew's the sixth chapter. Alright. It says, um, I'll read that. Matthew's chapter six and verse thirty one. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after for after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye First, the kingdom of Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. As long as we're seeking him and serving him, he is going to keep us alive. As long as we are seeking him and serving him, he is going to take care of us and put a hedge of protection around about us. Okay? As for everybody else that's not seeking him, they're not going to get these things added onto them. They're not going to get the shelter. They're not going to get the clothing. They're not going to get the food and the drink. Because they were seeking their own way. They were serving their own belly. Doing their own thing. Instead of submitting to, to, to our creator. All right. So back in Isaiah 66 and 1. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh. The heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath mine hand made. And all those things have been saith the Lord. But to this man will I look. To this man will I look. That word look is the Hebrew word nabat, which means to regard with care. So the Lord said, I've created everything. Everything that you see, everything that you don't see. Everything on earth, everything in the heavens. I've created all those things. What house are you going to build onto me? Then he says, this is the man will I look. This is the man who I care for, who I'm dealing with, who I'm supping with. It says, but to this man will I look. Even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit and trembleth at my word. So if we have these characteristics, the Lord regards us with care. He cares for us. If you don't have those characteristics, you are born in vain and you will perish with the multitudes. All right. So let's go from there to the book of Proverbs. I finish on that Chronicles, I believe. This is Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 4. It says, Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. All right? So your money is not going to mean shit. Okay? Yo, the, the amount of money that you had, the dollar is going to collapse. Okay? Your money is not going to mean nothing. Your money is not going to be able to save you. Your money is not going to be able to deliver you. There's a couple of scriptures. One in Zephaniah and there's also one in Ezekiel, I believe. This is Ezekiel chapter 7 and verse 17. It says, All hands shall be feeble, and all knees shall be weak as water. SWV, right? I call this the SWV uh, scripture. Uh, weak in your knees. Okay? It says, so it's about to get real bad out here. Niggas are still playing games, twisting the scriptures, adding and taking away. All right? Speaking things worthy of banishment. The Lord's going to bring a halt onto all, all that bullshit, man. He said, I'll cause this proverb to cease. He about to shut all these false uh, uh, prophets up. All right. 
Verse 18, it says, they shall also gird themselves with sackcloth and horror shall cover them mourning. So that is going back to the statement I made, right? The Lord is going to take all the joy and the mirth like the Isaiah said, Isaiah 24, right? The joy and the mirth is gone, okay? And when the joy and the uh, mirth leaves, was going to come uh, um, in, in its stead, all right? Mourning, horror shall cover them. It says, and shame shall be upon all faces. And baldness upon all their heads. They shall cast their silver in the streets. And their gold shall be removed. And their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. Your gold's not going to save your, your money. All right. Because now even the, 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 the currency that you, that you carry is not even backed by gold. It's not even backed by silver. All right. It's not going to have any value. I'll show you that in the movie I Am Legend. This whole plague that breaks out, right? And everybody starts dying. And he thinks he's the only one left on the earth. And he's running through the uh, the bank to get his dog. And there's a bunch of money on the ground, right? A bunch of Federal Reserve notes, blue faces, $100 bills on the ground. He didn't stop and say, shit, let me, I'm rich now. No, it has no value. It's not going to mean shit, all right? It says... Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. They're not going to be fed. They're not going to be full. They're not going to be satisfied, right? That's going back to that uh, Proverbs 11. Let's read it again. Proverbs 11 and 4. Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. So the Lord is bringing great death. Upon, instead of the slain of the Lord shall be many, he's bringing great death upon this place. Let the multitudes perish that is born in vain. Okay? So how do we escape this death? How do we escape his wrath? It said righteousness, not money, right? Not fame in this world. Okay? It's not going to be based on how many YouTube subscribers you have or how many comments you get on your videos. Not, that's not what it's going to be based on. Okay, it's based on your relationship with Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. Says Abraham's faith was counted to him as righteousness. Okay, so what? That's what we're focused on right now. We're focused on uh, 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 our building our faith. Okay, by praying for more faith. That's the only way we can get it. It says Ephesians two and eight. By grace are you saved through faith. Which is not of yourselves. It's a gift of the Heavenly Father. The only way to be delivered is by having faith. Okay? And a lot of these people, a lot of these Israelites, they're not they're not faithful. Alright? Uh, and, and it's going to be seen. It's already being shown. A lot of people is getting scared. A lot of people is getting nervous. A lot of people is crumbling to the pressure. Okay? And switching up. Okay? But he is going, it says, let my prophets be found faithful. I believe that's Sirach 36. Um, it, it, it says, um, damn, what's that scripture? Let my prophets be found faithful. Luke 18, Luke 18. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man come, shall he find faith on earth. When he returns, he's looking for the ones that have faith. I was going to get something in the uh, Apocrypha. This is Proverbs 11 and 4. Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivered from death. Right. The Wadi Alba Shem Yashad. This is not of ourselves, man. These fucking bodies is weak as hell. You forgetting what the hell I'm about to say. The scripture I was about to get. But the Spirit, give it back. The Wadi Alba Shem This is the book of 2 Ezra. Chapter 7. And verse 20, in verse 20, second Ezra uh, 7 and 20, because I said um, in that Proverbs, is, uh, it says righteousness delivered from death. Great death is coming. What do we have to do to escape the great death, the uh, uh, the great wrath of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai that's coming right now as we speak? This is second Ezra chapter 7 and verse 20. It says... Yeah, verse 20, it says, For there be many that perish in this life, because they despise the law of Yahweh that is set before them. So it's been presented to everybody. It's been set before everybody. This is what we're supposed to be doing. Have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the world. All right? This gospel has been preached in all the four corners of the earth, and that's why we see the end coming. 
Nobody has an excuse. Okay? Everybody has been warned. Everybody has heard the sound of the trumpet. Alright? You've heard, as it go back into Isaiah uh, 65, you said at not his counsel. Alright? When he called, you did not answer. When he spake, you did not hear. Therefore, you're numbered to the slaughter for your disobedience, right? For your unwillingness to submit. It says, 2 Ezra chapter 7 and verse 20, For there be many that perish in this life. Majority of people is going to die. Because they despise the law of Yahweh that is set before them. For Yahweh, they despise the law of the Lord. It says in the book of Proverbs 13 and 13, If you despise the word of Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh Shai, you shall be destroyed. Plain and simple. Okay? It says, For Yahweh have given straight commandment to such as came that, uh, so like to such as came, what they should do to live, even as they came, and what they should observe to avoid punishment. The Lord is telling you, do this and you will live. Right? Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. Receive with meekness the, the, the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. Alright? Getting into this word. Serving him in truth and in sincerity. Those are the ones he's going to deliver. Those are the ones he's going to save. Right? It says, nevertheless, they were not obedient unto him. But spake against him and imagined vain things. So you're not gonna you're not gonna avoid the punishment. Okay? You going you're gonna catch that hell. It says, and deceive and deceived themselves by their wicked deeds, and said the most high, and said of the most high that he is not and knew not his ways. Shit, that's a terrible fucking mentality. That's a terrible mind frame to have. Thinking that the men the, the eyes of the Lord says, such only fear are the eyes of men, not knowing that the eyes of the Lord is ten thousand times brighter than the sun. Beholding all things, he see everything. Alright? He see everything. He sees what you're doing. He sees what you're, uh, he hears what you're saying. All right. He knows your thoughts. The scriptures say no thoughts escape him. Um, It says, but his law have they despised and denied his covenants. They denied his covenants. That goes back to Second Chronicles. Our forefathers entered into a covenant with the heavenly father Yahweh. Name is only begotten son Yahweh Shai. That whosoever would not seek them with all their heart. Shall surely be put to death, whether man or woman, whether small or great. It says, In his statutes have they not, so like, yep, in his statutes have they not been faithful and have not performed his works. We're, we're following his statutes, okay, to the best of our ability. We're performing his works to the best of our ability, doing the work of an evangelist. Uh, 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 sighing and crying for the abominations to be done in the midst thereof. Okay? Lifting up our, like, uh, our voice like a trumpet. Showing our people their transgression. Sounding the alarm in um, uh, in Zion and blowing that trumpet. Giving them warning for, from Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. Speaking in the ears of the Lord's people the words of prophecy. We're doing these things through the spirit and power Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. He has us doing these things. Why? Because he is going to save us as long as we endure, as long as we, 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 so like it, we remain faithful in the trials that's to come. We just got we got a couple more tests to pass. Alright. A couple weak ass tribulations to get through. And then we'll be in the kingdom. Joint heirs with Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. Alright, so let's go from there to Wisdom of Solomon in the fifth chapter. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 5 and verse 1. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. And we're standing in boldness through the spirit and power of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah. We're not folding like the rest of these niggas. Telling you to get the jab. Telling you to get the devil's poison in his serum. Alright? That's, that's not bold. That's weak. They're crumbling already to keep a job. Damn, slavery-ass mentality, right? Slave-ass mentality that these niggas have. We're pushing rulership, okay? We're pushing departing from uh, 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 the, the hand of this devil, all right? That's what we're pushing. We're pushing uh, 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 trusting in Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shai and not trusting in Esau Edom, 
not trusting in the one, it says that they shall no longer stay upon them that smote him, but they shall stay upon the Lord Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai in truth, roughly paraphrasing Isaiah 10. All right. These niggas is telling you to stay, meaning trust in the in, in this devil, the one that smote us. All right. The one that's been killing you, raped, robbed, and murdered since he came into rulership, since before that, since the beginning of times. He been plotting on us. And these niggas saying, yeah, go, yeah, we know he the devil, but you got to trust him this one, this one time. Scripture say never trust your enemy. That's a, 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 a Hebrew Israelite scripture 101, right? Let me get my son real fast. It sound like he might just put himself back to sleep. So fuck it. We're just going to keep on going. I got, this is all I want to get. Anyway, this was my Solomon 5 and 1. It says, then shall the righteous... Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness be before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they look for. And the strangeness of our salvation is talking about the chariot, so-called UFO, so-called UAPs. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming forth to carry us home. All right. And our home is not Africa. All right. Jerusalem is the mother of us all. All right? That's our way out. And the way to get into them chariots is by faith. In Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Hebrews it says, Without faith it's impossible to please him. He that comes to the Most High must believe that he is, and that he's a reward a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. It says, And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, This was he whom we had sometimes in derision and a proverb of reproach. We fools accounted his life madness and his end to be without honor. And that's how people look, look at us, man. Especially first coming in, the people that you knew in the world, they see that you're cutting off certain things and not running to uh, uh, running uh, with them to the same excess of uh, wine and drunkenness. Roughly paraphrasing, First Peter the fourth chapter. Okay, they look at you and say they, they think it's strange, right? That you're not participating in that same shit that they're doing. That same wicked worldly shit that they're doing. Oh, instead of going, I was in high school. I was in high school uh, when I first started getting into this truth, getting into this word. And I, I didn't go to college. I, I skipped out on college. You know, that's what's taught to you. You go after high school, you graduate high school, you go and you get you a degree. And then you, you know, use that degree to get a job or, or whatever it may be. So when my peers, most of them or whatever, start going to college, I fell back. And was learning this book, all right? Was putting this within me, all right? So a lot of so-called friends or, or whatever it may be, family, okay? Is looking at you like, oh, you're wasting your life. Counting your life madness. But soon it's going to be revealed this is the only thing that matters. What he was doing, all right? When we were scoffing him, calling him crazy, calling him weird. He was actually right the whole time. Now he's straight and we fucked up. Now we mourning and he laughing at us. Right? It says, then you shall know a prophet. That when these things begin to come to pass, then you will know a prophet has been among you. It says, and they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, this was he whom we had sometime in derision and a proverb uh, of reproach. We fools accounted his life madness and his end to be without honor. And it, it says that... Um, they count his life madness and his end to be without honor. But there's great honor. We have to humble ourselves to get the honor. All right. And that honor is coming. The Lord said in the land, uh, I will give you praise and fame in the land where you were put to shame. All right. So we've been brought low. Now we're coming into the times where the Lord is going to exalt us. All right. Verse four, it says, uh, it's like in verse five. How is he numbered among the children of Yahweh? It's like it. All right, Salakia. There's um second uh wisdom of Solomon chapter five. Getting back into it, wisdom of Solomon chapter five and verse <clears throat> three. It says, "And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, This was he whom we had sometimes in derision and a proverb of reproach. We fools accounted his life madness and his end to be without honor." But the scriptures say in the book of Psalms, surely there is a reward for the righteous, right? That Proverbs 11, it said, 
Righteousness deliver from um from death. Okay? And righteousness is what? Faith in Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. And as it says in James, okay, faith without works is dead. So with our faith comes action. Alright? Which is the Hebrews that we quoted, Hebrews eleven and six. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. He that cometh to the Most High must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Alright? So if you have faith in him, you're going to be seeking him diligently. Alright? And that's us spiritually building that hedge, or us spiritually building that ark. Alright? The next verse in that Hebrews, it says, Moses, uh, Noah moved with fear and faith to the building of an ark, to the saving of his house, and he condemned the world. Roughly paraphrasing. Alright? It says, we fools account his life madness and his end to be without honor. How is he numbered among the children of Yahweh and his lot is among the saints? Uh, his lot among the saints. Therefore, have we erred from the way of truth and the light of righteousness have not shined onto us and the sun of righteousness rolls not upon us. We wearied ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. We wearied ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. They wasted their time. At first, we was the one wasting our time because we wasn't building in this world. Because we wasn't going and trying to elevate in this society. Alright? But now that they see uh, 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 and will continue to see, right, this place crumbling and falling. And that that degree that they went to go uh, 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 get, okay, that they put all this time into to get that house Okay, or get that high paying job. And really a lot of these motherfuckers got a degree and, and all they got is debt to go with it. Okay. But nonetheless, the tables is going to turn. Right. Trading places. This is the only thing that is going to matter. And the world is going to come, come to that uh, conclusion. All right. Ezekiel 9 and 4, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst of If you haven't been sighing and crying, you're not going to have that mark upon you. That word mark is the Hebrew word, the wild, which means to be exempt from judgment. All right? So it says, we reared ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. Yea, we have gone through the deserts uh, where there lay no way. But as for the way of the Lord, we have not known it. They have no relationship with the Lord. As the as far as the way of the Lord, we don't know it. Because they don't have a spirit. They don't have the Holy Spirit. They don't have this wisdom. This is the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9 and verse 17. And thy counsel who hath known, except thou give wisdom and send thy Holy Spirit from above. We know the counsel of the Lord, which means he has given us his spirit. He has given us wisdom, right? Verse 18, it says, For so the ways of them which lived on the earth were reformed, and men were taught the things that are pleasing unto thee, and were saved through wisdom. Saved through wisdom. And wisdom, with, with, with the wisdom, you do the things that are pleasing unto you. It teaches us the things that are pleasing to Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shai. This is how we are going to be saved. In Wisdom of Solomon, the 10th chapter, it says that... um. I'll just read it. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10, and verse... Mm. I'll start at verse 6. Wisdom of Solomon, 10 and 6. When the ungodly perished, she delivered the righteous man. She being wisdom, okay? Not the black woman, okay? It says... Um, it says... Uh, when the ungodly perished, she delivered the righteous man. Who fled from the fire, which fell down upon the five cities. It's talking about Lot. Of whose wickedness even to this day the wasteland that smoketh is a testimony and plants bearing fruit that never came to ripeness. And a standing pillar of salt is a monument of an unbelieving soul. Speaking of what? Lot's wife. She didn't believe. So she's a monument. A memorial of an unbelieving soul. That's what's going to happen. All the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. For what is some that I believe? Should I make the faith of Yahweh to none effect? Yahweh for big hell to the no. Right? It says, verse 8, For regarding not wisdom, they got not only this hurt, that they knew not the things which were good, but also left behind them to the world, it's like, yeah, left behind them to the world a memorial of their foolishness, so that in the things wherein they offended, they could not so much be they said they 
Salakia. They could not so much as be hid, but wisdom delivered from pain those that attended upon her. All right. Wisdom is going to deliver us from the plagues. All right. From the play, uh, from from the plagues, from the punishment that's to come. Back in Wisdom of Solomon, chapter five, and verse, uh, yep, verse eight. It says, "What hath pride profited us, or what good have riches with our vaunting brought uh, brought us?" They're gonna realize that, damn, we done fucked up. We wasted our time. We should have been what they was. Uh, 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 we should have been doing what they was doing. All those things are passed away like a shadow and as a post that hasteth by. All those things are passed away. Everything that they was focused on, right, building their careers, building in society, all right, you know, having fun, partying and bullshitting, all that shit is going to come to an end. All those things are going to pass away. Then what? Then what are you going to do with that damn degree? Okay? When they shut all these fucking colleges down, what are you going to do? With all that time that you put in. When these businesses begin to close again. Right? When they start taking people out of their houses. Then what are you going to do? Right? It says, and as a ship that passeth over. And that's, you know, that's really the point. I'll jump down to verse 14. This is uh, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 5 and 14. For the hope of the ungodly is like dust that is blown away with the wind, like a thin froth that is driven away with the storm, like as the smoke which is dispersed here and there with a tempest and passeth away as the remembrance of a guest that tarrieth but a day. But the righteous live forevermore. Their reward also is... Is with the Lord and the care of them is with the most high. The Lord cares. For, it says that he loveth none but them that dwell with wisdom. If you do not have his wisdom. Right. And trying to obtain all this wisdom that you can. He don't give a fuck about you. He don't care about you. Okay. It said but going back to the Isaiah. But to this man will I look. Him that is poor of a contrite heart and trembleth at my word. If you don't have them characteristics he does not care about you. He's mad at you. He's angry with you. It says, verse 16, Therefore shall they receive a glorious kingdom and a beautiful crown from the Lord's hand. For with his right hand shall he cover them and with his arm shall he protect them. He is going to be with us because we've been serving him. He is going to be with us because we rejected our own lives, denied our own selves to be his disciple, to be his servant. All right. To praise his holy name, to declare his works. He's not going to leave us hanging. We've through the, he's allowed us to do for him, therefore he's going to do for us. The scriptures say, draw nigh unto the most high, and he will draw nigh unto you. Alright? We've been fighting, we've been battling. Alright? Says the scripture, if the most high before you, who can be against you? When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. We've been doing what we can to please Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Applying what is written, which is pleasing to him. By the foolishness of preaching, it pleased uh, them to save, it, it pleased the Most High to save them that believe. All right? So, Lord willing, we stay, we stay uh, uh, in tune and one accord with the Spirit and remain faithful and continue to, uh, and the Lord continue to increase our faith. And he's going to give us a, a great, glorious reward. As for everybody else, all right, they're, they're going to, it says in the book of Galatians, uh, the Lord is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. He that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. He that soweth to the spirit of the spirit shall reap life everlasting. Be not weary in well doing. For in, uh, 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 it says, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Okay? So continue to uh, uh, participate in this well doing. And a great reward, everlasting life is coming to us. All right? So having that said, Lord willing, that was edifying. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham, Ha'chodash. Yahweh is the true, holy, powerful, and mighty name of the Heavenly Father. And Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, powerful, and mighty name of His only begotten Son, our Lord and our Savior. Ha'chodash is the Holy Spirit that speaks through us, that allows us to rightly divide the word of truth and teach the word correctly and directly. The Thamash Nakabai allows the Kumishar Shirala, get double honest to the elders of Israel, being the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, that will well. Shalom, Wahabla, Baki, Yashar, Yashirala, which is peace and love to the elect of Israel. Shalom, Maki, and brothers, keep on pushing, stay sober, stay diligent, stay faithful, stay prayed up. Salvation draweth nigh, redemption's near than we believe. Shalom.